Hey guys, Panda Daily here, and welcome to my newest Let's Play. Yes, we're back with Zelda Classic, and yes, that is my test file for the LP we're going to play. I promise I won't be nearly that bad. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do another Zelda Classic quest, because I felt like it. So let's register our name, which is, once again, Pen, and start A. Oh, right. Still keyboard. Okay, so we're going to press A and play a custom quest. Browse. And let's see. Down here, I believe. Okay. Yep. Hyrule's Resurrection by our old friend, Jamian. Yeah, Jamian. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> so... You know what this means. It means awesome music, lots to do and see, questionable design choices, and dick moves. Lots of dick moves. So let's get started. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, um, now let's get started. Hyrule's Resurrection. A quest by Jamian. Play this quest with ZC250. Uh, according to one of my viewers, yeah, Hotmail apparently routes through Outlook, but it's still a thing. Push down. Okay. A long, long time ago, the world was in an age of chaos. A great and sudden flood had submerged most of Hyrule. Haven't I heard this before? The land had changed. New islands had formed. Some cities were gone. Monsters had appeared in every place. Hylians were living in fear. And trees. Push down. This was all the work of Ganon, Hyrule's old nemesis. He had been resurrected by three of his former minions. Yeah, they're, these actually are crows, so don't expect, like, Twin Rova or anything. To top it all, Ganon had kidnapped Zelda to absorb her powers. And Impa, Zelda's nurse, had mysteriously disappeared. No one knows where Ganon is hiding, but some say Hyrule Castle, because of course he is. Alas, Hyrule Castle is no longer accessible. The land has changed. There used to be a passage leading there from the Sanctuary. But similarly, the Sanctuary has disappeared during the Flood. Somewhere in Kakariko, a brave hero is ready to challenge Ganon. He will need to recover eight Triforce pieces to find and fight his enemy. It will be a long and perilous quest. May the Triforce help you. Yeah, we're looking at 15 to 20 hours, maybe. Link, we are in danger. A Moblin band has invaded Kakariko. Even here, we are no longer safe. Do something! You'd better get your sword. You left it at the practice field. I'm kind of an idiot. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Moblins. Um, enemy bait. Uh, this is actually incredibly useful. For one thing, it will distract the moblins. Uh, this is this is the way to the practice field, by the way. Uh, like here. See, if I put that there, see all the moblins go running for it. So yeah, uh, unlike many Zelda games, we apparently didn't start this one waking up. Or maybe we did. Maybe we were woken out of a sound sleep by this. So yeah, um... The enemy bait is extremely useful, not just in this part of the game. I don't actually think there is a grumble grumble anywhere in this game. Damn it. Don't worry too much, I mean... Oh, hey, money. Yeah, you can cut the grass and get money and hearts. So, you know, try not to get hurt, but... You do want to cut grass, by the way because uh, there will be things to buy here soon enough. So, you know, oh, and that was magic, because, of course, you have a magic meter, as you can see. This music, by the way, is uh, Final Fantasy VII battle music, I believe. Uh, Jamie, and as usual, has a wonderful ear. Uh, some of the music isn't, the music isn't necessarily as amusingly appropriate appropriate as it was in Stranded. Uh, there is a lot about this quest 
that is similar to Stranded and a lot that's different. You can tell that this was made afterwards because he really did learn a few things. So I have done a lot of complaining about Jamian's tendency to dick moves. Uh, oh, fuck you too. Um, yeah. See, luckily you can kill, you can get these things, these, uh, grass quite, quite easily. And as you can see, there's a, we're getting a fair amount of, uh, thing. <laughs> we're getting a fair amount of money here. Uh, anyway, I have talked a lot about Jamian's dick moves, so some people might wonder why I'm playing this quest. This really, really isn't a hard bit, so I'm just going to talk. Uh, Jamian is a gifted dungeon designer. Um, honestly, also a gifted quest designer. There's nobody in there. Okay, then. Uh, there, Jamian does things in this quest that I find fascinating, and I really do think they have an amazing skill. Uh, they do some things with dungeon design that I will talk about later that I really, really appreciate. It's just they're also a massive troll. And a dick, sometimes. Um, I will, I really didn't dis, in the last LP, I didn't really differentiate between dick moves and troll moves, and I think I will try and do better in this LP. <sighs> the thing is, okay, I have just watched, um, Isle of Rebirth, and you want to talk about hard, and in some cases, like, mean difficulty. Stranded, I can play, and this, I can play. There are things that Jamian does that I do think are kind of dickish. But, you know, they're okay. Well, when I say they're okay, they, they are not unforgivable. Half tile trick is still awesome. Uh, let's see. You do want to sort of hit every um, screen of this and kill all the moblins. Not that it does anything, but one, the money is nice. Uh, wow, I am really sucking. And the thing is, when you get these guys homed in on the enemy bait, they will not try and, you know, go up or get you or anything. Anyway, as I was saying, Jamian. Uh, hold on. Okay. Jamian is a gifted dungeon and quest designer, and they do a lot of things with this quest, hi fairy, that I really am impressed with. It's just, they do make some choices I don't agree with, and some things that I think are really dickish and mean. Okay. Did I not kill the guys on the screen above me? No, I did, and then I just didn't. Uh, we gotta pick up a 50 rupee, um, which I didn't and I didn't stop. It must have appeared right under us. Uh, we'll talk about that because I'm sure I'll see more later. Um, there's a problem with the 50 rupees. Like I said, you didn't see them. Uh, so, and I guess I'll talk about that too right now. Rupees. In this quest, rupees, mo well, 1s, 5s, and 20s have the standard colors that you know and love from every Zelda game, starting with uh, Zelda, the, with Link to the Past. Okay, oh yeah, we, we do need to kill these guys. Because you need that. We don't need to kill this guy, but we're going to anyway. Blue Moblins, a little more deadly, a little more uh, durable. Okay, be ready to move. Ah, a green moblin, help! Dude, do I look like a moblin to you? Don't answer that. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so the problem is that there really aren't standardized colors for any of the other rupee values. Um, Jamian uses the uh, reasonably common uh, 100 rupee silver and, and this is why we needed that key, and, uh, 200 rupee yellow or gold, but they also have, they also use, um, oh, of course, uh, you know what, quick, 
Okay, well, let's just see here. Really? There we go. I sort of want to go in here with uh, full hearts. Not that I really need it, but I sort of want to. Okay. So, there we go. Oh, hey. Well, I suppose that means... Well, you'll see. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, uh, blue moblins, and... As you can see, that moblin is wearing our shirt. So, no wonder that guy actually thought we were a moblin. And these assholes are not susceptible to enemy bait. Luckily, really, they don't move that fast. So, we unlock the door, and... You have defeated the chief of the Moblin group. Well done. They will leave us alone now, but this is just the beginning. Please help us save Hyrule and look for the Triforce pieces. Take this. If you charge your sword, you will do a spin attack. It causes more damage and helps you locate bombable spots. And that is really important. And now, we are out here. This music is called Korobe, and it is from Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Uh, so, I kept thinking it was like the Kamiki Village theme from Okami, but that's mostly because it's been a while since I've played that game. Anyway, so, yeah, tens. You are eventually going to want that, uh, yeah, we have a nice charge ring. You don't want the charge ring. You are eventually going to want that wallet, but that's going to take a while. So, um, 10 rupees are a sort of grayish purple. Okay, that's not a common color, and we need to do this, and I am going to just buy 8 bombs because I don't want to deal with trying to grind for them. Because it's actually really hard. Okay, so now let's look around the rest of the, um, town. So, yeah, 10 rupees are sort of a grayish purple. We may see those. Can I talk to you? No. You can't actually talk to anybody out here. Uh, they're just decoration. Lately, I have heard music coming from the Silent Cave. Strange. Yeah, it's the Silent Cave, normally. So, 50 rupees are black. And, Jamian, I don't know that it is necessarily a good idea to have a rupee. The Tunnel to the Lost Woods is blocked by a rock. Ganon did this. I've heard playing an ancient melody will open the path again. Yep. So, you can probably guess what we're going to need. Anyway. So, if you want... Oh, and of course, let's show the spin attack. It's your basic fairly standard spin attack. It won't actually get the diagonal. I don't know if that's a limitation or if Jamie did that on purpose. But I don't think, by the way, that it is a good idea to have a rupee, especially a high denomination rupee, that looks so much like a rupor. Or just a black rupee. Black rupees have been in other Zelda games, not just Skyward Sword, and they always mean... Yeah, we need a bow. Come back later. You can get some very nice stuff here, but way later. So honestly, there's not too much else to do here. Let's head out into the wider overworld. Octorox! And of course, we have lovely music. So, uh, we do, as you can see, have a space bar map. This game has... If I remember correctly, yeah, it has four overworlds. Not all of them are full 16 by 16. Yeah, that's right. It's Terra's theme. Because, of course it is. So, yeah, we can go... I'm going to explore around, and then we'll head to the Silent Cave, which is our next... Um destination, which I'm sure shocks you. Blue Octorox. They tend to give better money than red Octorox. And you do sort of want to grind a little. Don't grind hugely, but... I mean, kill everything you see, because you're going to want that wallet upgrade. Soon. Okay. Die. 
So yes, it's a uh, Terra's theme, which is lovely. Uh, not all of the overworlds actually use all 16 by 8, or yeah, 16 by 8 squares. I think ha this one, Hylian Fields, does, and that's it. The others use more or less. And much like Stranded, this is kind of not so much linear. You will basically be funneled where you need to go. As you can see, this is where we're eventually... This is the path to the Lost Woods, which is level one. We'll be dealing with that, but not today. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just gonna... We get a fairy lake. Keep this place in mind. Um, we'll be back there in a sec. Oh, hello. First, we kill all the octopi. Hmm. Yes, this is going to be another LP full of me making comments about how much I miss Takoyaki. Some, some enemies take hits from the sword, but block the sword beam. Remember that throughout your journey, and good luck! Yeah, that is a thing. Ah, <sighs> it kind of gets annoying sometimes. That's not... I mean, I think that's actually a good design. It's just inconvenient sometimes. Okay, well, we've been here, but move up... Yeah, for whatever reason, and I kind of like it, Jamian replaced Zora's in most, not all, but most, actually no, all of this game. There aren't any Zora's, there's just Octoroks, which is interesting. I wonder if it's just because he likes the Octoroks better, or if it's a story thing, because of course in other games Zora's are good guys, or... Who knows? But yeah, it's uh, we've got these silver or gray Octoroks instead. So, as you can see, we're already... Ow. Ow. Stupid. As you can see, we're already getting quite a bunch of money, and the, the hearts are very plentiful. Okay. These bushes, basically they are like trees from the original Legend of... Really? The original Legend of Zelda. Or the bushes are... Their bushes are trees, much like... Um, in the original Legend of Zelda. You cannot cut them with your sword. And so they often form walls. Okay. Just keep sniping. Just keep sniping. I'm sorry. And as you can see, we can't do anything here yet either. But the nice thing is you're... Uh, you're Spacebar map does update pretty well, so it can tell you when there's something you might need to do. And gee, what's across here? This should be nostalgic. Yeah, welcome to the Silent Cave. Oops, sorry, I spoiled it by five minutes. Or five seconds. So yeah, this place. Uh, this music, from what I can tell, is... The opening music from... It's basically the music that plays in Criteria when you first land on Zebes in Super Metroid. I'll let you listen to it for a bit. Yeah, Paul's voice looked even weirder in this sprite than normal. Yeah, push that. We have bats. Like Stranded, this quest allows for door spammage. You take advantage of that. And there's the compass. Okay. You do want to take advantage also of your spin attack. Ah, here we go. And check the door. And this is why you want to have bombs. Because I really, I mean, I think the blue Octoroks can drop them, but they don't usually. And if you notice, that is a very definitely different sound. So, I gotta say, one thing I love about the, the fact that you get the enemy bait is it's a non-consumable. And it really is really very, very useful. So we head up. We don't have to kill this Paul's voice, and the only thing you get if you do is a single heart. So, eh. Okay, that's just 
nothing that we need to deal with just yet. At least I don't think you get anything. I'm pretty sure it's just a single heart. Kill you. Yeah, good, because this is where we get the map. And as you can see, it's not particularly... Meet our first Stalfos. Not that big a deal, but hopefully you got that key from the side branch. That is a switch. Uh, they don't necessarily do blocks. Some of them do, but mostly they just change things. So yeah, I'm not killing you because I don't need the heart. And now, as you can see, the puddle has dried up, and we can move on. Don't think there's actually any need to kill these guys. There is a need to kill these guys. Uh, these bats, you'll notice, have, like, blue shading on their wings. Much later, you will see ones that have red shading on their wings. There's no real difference, except that red shaded bats are, well, I don't think there's anything in there. Yep, it's a stall. It's a trap room. Um, and there are stalfos, but... Okay, then! Well, that was easy enough. Yeah, this is a trap room. There is nothing in there. So, whatever. Luckily, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because the stalfos right now... Why do I keep getting clocks when I don't need them? Right now, the Stalfos are not exactly threats. Can't do anything about that yet. We will do it shortly. Okay. I love your damage. Uh, the Pole's voice really isn't... Ah, oh, crap. There we go. Now, this could be a little harder because you have to deal with the Paul's voice being erratic and annoying. Ah! See? Ow! Crap. If I die, I'm gonna be really annoyed, but far from the course. And it's all because I was stupid. However... Okay. Um... Because I hate that noise, and it's not going away anytime soon. We're going to F6. Continue. And then we're going to go back in, because you still remember that one bit uh, that we didn't completely um, explore. Well, I'm going to explore that. Now, you might want to wait and come back, but I've got a trick. The, the thing that's at the end of that particular way is kind of difficult if you're not... If you don't know the tr if you don't know the trick, I know, and of course it might fail miserably, but it worked in my test run, so we'll find out. Ugh. Die, bunny. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Yep, just keep killing these guys. I'd rather not die than that beeping is really annoying. You can turn it off, but. Basically, just... Ugh, I hate... Hate that. Okay, yeah, this guy would, of course, give you... Oh, wait, I do have to go this way. This guy will give you a single heart if you kill him, and it's not worth it, especially not right now. I wasn't gonna walk all the way back here and try and kill that guy in the hopes of a single heart. I do want to be at full hearts for what I'm doing, even though I suspect... I won't need to be. <sighs> Don't be impatient like I'm being. That is that is that is what got me. That's what got me hurt with the Stalfos. And that's what you know got me killed with the Paul's voice really, so I'm not killed. You get me. So yeah, don't be impatient. Be methodical. Alright. So there wasn't a switch, but what did we get in this dungeon? Oh, and yeah, you can use the shoulder buttons to cycle through, so that's nice. 
I don't know if there's anything in there or not. Okay. Alright, and kill you. And, oh, there's a heart here. I don't care. Okay, so, um... Yeah, why am I switching to bombs? You'll see why. So we've got a dig dogger here. It's a... You'll note it's a single dig dogger. Um, let's see. All right. So watch him move a bit. Okay. And lay a bomb. Good. Now immediately... Yep. Good. Oh, well that didn't work very well. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That is an old Zelda 1 trick. Now, you notice it took three sword hits. Um, as near as I can tell, like I said, that's an old Zelda 1 trick. And I'll talk about it as I walk out, because we're going to pretty much finish up. I'm going to go to, well, the next area, and then you'll see. That was weird. Eh, anyway. The way it works is the... Flute freezes everything on the screen, but it doesn't actually freeze timers. Like, say, the countdown timer for your bombs. It also doesn't freeze the countdown timer for regular bubble jinxes. So, in the original Zelda, if you wanted, you if you got hit with a white bubble, you could play the flute, and you would... By the time the flute had finished playing, the bubble jinx would wear off. It didn't actually remove the jinx, it just kept you from getting hit by anything until the jinx wore off. It was a nice stalling tactic, basically, because nothing could move, but the thing was still running. So, the delay on a bomb is just about the same as the delay on the, what is this thing called? The Ocarina. You die. You die too. Whoop. You get to die free. Thank you. I'll let you live. Yeah, so we got bombs, or bombs, bats. Ah, just, yeah. Okay, let's see. What are we at? 27 minutes. Um, this is sort of a mini dungeon, actually. And I think I'm going to kill the pea hat because how often did you actually manage to do that shit? And then I'm going to call it here. That's, we've been about 27, 28 minutes, so that's the normal time. Anyway, but let me finish up what I was saying. So the delay on the bomb and the delay on the ocarina are about the same. So... The bomb basically goes off before the tiny little dig dogger, who moves very quickly, can get away. So what you do is you take advantage of the fact that large dig doggers, while invulnerable, move very slowly, and you plant a bomb on them. Then you use the ocarina, which the bomb is still counting down. So basically you make the dig dogger vulnerable just in time for the bomb to go off, but the dig dogger doesn't have a chance to run away from it. And then you only have to hit it three times, which the spin attack means that you don't have to try and run up and stab it. So yeah, that's a lot easier and we got our first, as you can see, piece of heart. But I'm gonna call it here for now. Next time we will explore the lost woods and find some new and interesting stuff. So thank you guys for joining me for Let's Play Hyrule's Resurrection and I will see you next time. Have a great evening, goodbye.